subscribe. Hey lovelies, it's Imogen aka Mr. Mama Insane and welcome to my video. So I was talking to a friend about my travel altar and what I take with me when I'm doing that kind of a thing um, out and about or when I go away and I'm obviously away from my altar at home. So I actually have this little box here which is a travel altar and we'll get into that in a minute. First of all, I actually bought this. It was a little bit bigger when I bought it and it had straps, but it was terribly sewn, like really bad. <laughs> this is not straight whatsoever. I've tried to fix it the best I can. Um, this bit should be on the inside, but it was for whatever reason sewn on the outside. And there was, here is a really big mess and the whole thing was just really not good. And the inside has been lined, but there was a huge hole in the lining. So I fixed it as best I can. And I decided rather than use this as a bag bag, that I would use it to hoard things like little bags. So if I find herbs or stones or sea glass or anything that needs putting in little bags um, or little vial bottles, I have a bunch of different kinds. Uh, from plastic corks to cork corks and even uh, some plastic screw on lids. I also have some ribbons and some strings in here uh, in case I ever need that kind of thing. And then there's just a few more little bags and stuff. And then an awl, uh, which I found a few times. Uh, sometimes I test um, certain seeds and nuts to make sure that they're not off if I find them on the floor. Well, when I find them on the floor, because um, I had a horrible experience where I brought home some very nasty bugs one time. And so that was just in there, just in case. So this is literally all this bag is, is just a bag of containers, basically. And I often just kind of dump that in my regular bag, because it's not very big and it takes up even less space when I fold it up. Uh, there you go, that's folded. <laughs> um, so the, that's that. All right, on to the point of this video. And uh, so this is my travel altar. And basically it is just, oh, missed one. It is just a plain little jewelry box that I got on eBay. Unfortunately, it didn't have the key anymore. And it was marked. And it's not white, as you can see, it's cream and it's dirty and that might be partly because I've used it so much. Uh, but it didn't come in the best condition, but I only got it for a couple of pounds, including postage. It was so, so cheap and I got it, I want to say about four, three, four, four years ago now, I think it was. So basically, <laughs> when you lift it up, and I honestly don't think I could fit that much more stuff in here. So this is what it looks like. And if I try and tip it back a little bit so you can see it, I will show you everything that is in here. So basically, uh, I wrote a blog about the use of birthday candles, or as I like to call them, wish candles, in magic, um, in witchcraft, paganism, and such forth. And so I have a bunch of these little candles in here. I have a couple of red ones, blue ones, purple ones, yellow ones, green ones. And then I have a gold and a silver to represent the garden goddess. And also in this little section here, I have this small bottle of actual water in case I need water for anything. And I just tied this little blue piece of thread on top so I know that this is just water in this one. That goes in there. And then in the same compartment, I keep some chalk. And uh, oh, by the way, I wrote a blog post about the candle thing and I will link that below. And then I just have some of these little doohickeys, which to be honest, I don't really use them because I find often that I can just stick them in the candles into the ground or um, that kind of a, a thing. Over into this next compartment, I have three tea light candles, which I just replenish whenever I use the top one seems to be a bit battered because uh, just because of the things on the top i uh, also in the section keep a little bag of coins which i use as offerings 
and I have drawn stars, well, pentacles, onto each one of these 1P coins. I have a 20-sided dice, which I use kind of like a spirit dice. Um, if you think of D&D and how D&D works, with your rolls being 20 as a higher and one being the lower, it's kind of like that, but in a kind of a spiritual connection. Then I have this little uh, ceramic thing. I just got it with some incense ages ago, uh, with some little cone incenses. And then I just have this, which was a, pe a necklace pendant. Um, it's just that Tibetan silver cheap pendant charm things. And I snipped off the circular bit that attaches it to things and filed it down. And I just literally use it in there or on its own as kind of like a an altar tile, really. Um, then I have a knife, which is really sharp. It just folds up and it's just this foldable knife and bottle opener. But it's really good for engraving into candles or cutting herbs or cutting things. You could also use it as a working knife or anathema of sorts, I suppose. Um, I don't use it for that, I, but I use it as a working knife. Then I have a lighter because fire. <laughs> uh, I don't smoke anymore, so it's rare that I carry lighters with me. So I have a lighter in here for that use. And then I have some of these. I have no idea why I put these in here, but you would not believe how helpful they have been. Um, you can light them and then use them to light things, uh, kind of like a match. Or um, there are lots. There are, believe it or not, other uses for them. And then I have these little vials. This one has patchouli in it. And this one has frankincense resin. This one has rose petals. This one has lavender. And this one has jasmine flower. Then I have these bottles, which has rock salt. I think it's uh, sorry, sea salt. And then this one is regular beach sand. This one is an oil fusion that I made for anointing. Um, it's kind of an all round protection and good positive energy oil that I use on a lot of my candles. Um, especially when I'm out because I always feel I need that extra protection when I'm away from home. And then this did have seawater in it. I don't know what it has in it now, it's looking pretty disgusting, but the seawater seemingly evaporated and yeah, I don't know what this ugly horrible black thing is in there, but it was seawater in that one. Um, and then it just has this... Um, I lined it with the back of some leather, so it's like a soft, um, leathery feel in there. And then let me just rub these three out. And then the top of this is um, something a little bit special because it has this pouch here, which actually attaches by a popper. It has like this pressed -up popper. So you can attach, and I say you can put like your little earrings and things in here and they don't get lost, which I think is brilliant, but it works super for me for what I want to do. So I have these really small incense sticks. Um, I can't remember what they are, but I just use, more or less use them as like a air element. And then speaking of air, I also have this feather, which is a magpie feather. Um, when I was creating this, I was really into magpies. I also have magpie feathers on my wand. Um, but I'm not so much into magpies anymore. Um, but around that specific time, they were a really big thing in my life. Um, and that relationship as well. So I've kept it in there, but I'm, I don't really use it. Uh, this mirror here. I put some black lace over it so it becomes more like a scry mirror. I don't like in magic for mirrors to be directly open on my big altar. Um, 
it's actually a display cabinet and the entire back of the display cabinet is glass. So I've covered it in a huge black neck curtain. So again, it creates that sort of scrying type mirror if I wanted to use that for such thing. Um, in that it's not a direct reflection. And I have used it for that before in the past. So this little bag opens up. I know, right, you're thinking, could you possibly fit any more stuff in here? And you will be surprised. So I have this keyring which I made, which is a little bit bent, but it is uh, corresponding chakra stones on a keyring and this triquatra uh, little sigil, uh, not sigil, symbol, <laughs> that's the word. Uh, and then in this little bag, I have, if I can carefully, so there is a bag of white sage because white sage is one of my go-to favorites for everything. And I also have in this little bag a piece of sea glass. I also recently did a blog on sea glass properties um, and they're very directed towards the, because they come from the sea and they've been tumbled by the sea. So they have those sea properties, they have those salt properties, the protection, they also have the water element. They also, because they are glass, they have the fire element. Um, and I will link that blog post as well. Uh, so I just have a piece of sea glass because I never know when I might need that kind of a thing. And also it's, as I said, the water and fire elements. I have a piece of black tourmaline. Now, this is a rough non-tumble piece of black tourmaline and black tourmaline is used for things like protection, especially against like negative energy of all kinds. Also grounding, positive attitude, uh, happiness, it aids healers in all different kinds of works. Um, black tourmaline is a go -to, one of my go-to stones for me. I really, really like this. Also in this little pouch, there is more. Uh, let's take that out for now. I have this quartz crystal wand and it is literally just a longish, uh, maybe two inches pieces of piece, sorry, <laughs> of clear quartz crystal, which um, is used for attracting and amplifying energy, it boosts energy um, of all kinds. It has all kinds of healing properties. Um, and you can use it with other stones to basically amplify their use as well. So it's an all around good stone to have, which is generally a lot of people, most common, I suppose. Then I have this tier of amethyst. And the tier of amethyst, basically amethyst is healing on all levels, uh, which is body, mind and spirit. It also raises vibrations or vibrational frequencies. Uh, it protects against negative energies and it's just an all-round great stone to have and again it is a raw piece of not tumbled stone um, and then finally I have this little piece of citrine which is fantastic for abundance personal power will um, manifestations, imagination, money, protection, healing, clarity, and much more. This little tiny guy has so much. And again, he is a rough piece. Um, so that is more or less the stones that I carry with me in here. And this one. <laughs> uh, if I don't, I, it's usually I will take my pendulum off of my altar. And I will usually use that one, which is a pink agate. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pink agate. And it's just, it was the one of the first ever things that I bought for my practice. And I've had it for the longest time and I use it a lot. Uh, but I didn't want to, I, I wanted to have something separate for my travel altar. So I have this piece of onyx. And it is a black onyx. It is not very big. It is absolutely perfect. I attached this pentacle on the other end of it. Um, I have enough to make a few of these and, and I am at one point was selling these. Um, so I do have stuff to be uh, various different charms, a lot of different charms. And this piece of black onyx, which I feel works very, very well for me as a, um, 
what is it, dowsing tool. There we go, that's the word. Um, so yeah, so this just goes back into, I've lost it, there we go. Uh, I keep it in this little black, black um, organza pouch and that I feel just keeps it separate uh, from my other crystals that I keep in this little pouch. But I keep all that in there. Um, so that is basically my travel order and it's kind of crazy how much stuff you can get in one small box. Um, I'm saying um a lot. I feel that a more traditional Wiccan travel altar may suit people, but this has everything that I feel that I need um, for varying circumstances, for varying needs, and that is, oh, it goes on this side. Other people's travel altars may include um, some tradition, more traditional type things like maybe an athame or a wand. I mean, I covered that with the black knife and also with the clear crystal point. Let's assume I can get this back on here now. There we go. Um, people may feel like they need a cauldron of sorts. Oh, sorry. People may feel like they need a cauldron of sorts. For me, this works perfectly fine as a cauldron. I know it's not black. Uh, I always had the thought about maybe painting it black, but to be honest, it works perfectly fine as is. Alternatively, if you're not happy with that, you could always take one of these out and use this little metal dip. Um, what else is there? Uh, Scrying, dousing, I'm trying to think what's, what's on my actual order. Um, we have, we've covered the incense. I have loose herbs that I can use as incense. I keep my money in this little gold bag because gold to me um, is kind of precious. Uh, alternatively, you might want to use green, but this for me, because it's an offer, the offerings, them not money, uh, even though it is my money, this is not going to go right back in here now. There we go. Um, so optional could be green, but for me, gold works. Then, like I say, uh, I need to figure out this. <laughs> uh, I need to figure out what the black stuff is in this. And again, I have um, varying. I use the sand often in here. Uh, to hold my candles in, or sand for protection qualities, because again, like sea glass, it has those same qualities from the beach. Uh, and then I have loose pieces of herb and resin. Hey. Sorry, the cat's now kicking the tripod. Um, so, loose pieces of herb and resin. I could swap out one of these for a charcoal disc. Uh, I don't feel the need to do that. For me, I can burn my herbs on top of my candles and that works perfectly fine for me. I need to put the lighter back in here first. And this lighter is nothing special. I do have a special lighter that I use on my altar, which is like a Zippo kind of lighter, and it's engraved with the phrase love and light. I'm unsure. I'm still coming to terms with if I want to share my actual altar. Um, it's not something I've really done. Like It's in the background of some of my like selfie photos and things like that, but I've never gone out of my way to share my altar itself. So I'm still kind of on the fence about that and um, yeah so this is basically my travel altar it has everything I need it has all of the elements again if you needed a cup you might want to have um, a cup in here which you could use a thimble I know I did that for a while um, 
chalice, or a chalice, sorry, not a cup, a chalice. You could use a thimble or you could even buy like a doll's house miniature. Um, some of the things I have are doll house miniature things. I have a doll house miniature cauldron, which sometimes I take with me if I feel that I need a separate cauldron to this, but it's cast iron and it's heavy. So I don't really take it that often because like I say, this has pretty much everything I feel that I need. And yeah, so that is my travel altar. Um, I feel it works for me. It's everything that I need in one very small, let's see if I can close this now, small box. And I do have to tuck a few things in and then it will close. Oop, she said. There we go. So that's everything and it's hard to imagine that all of that stuff fits in here and this isn't I mean it is kind of a bit of a brick but it's not as heavy as you would actually imagine this to be with all of that stuff in it I used to keep a little notebook journal in here but now I found that my planner is sufficient I have like a pocket size file facts and I can write my notes in there and then write them up later should I need to so that's more or less everything my travel to I would love to have a bag that was big enough to fix, fit this box and the stuff in here but sometimes I just want to take the stuff in here if I'm going out say like to the beach and I'm collecting sea glass I don't want to be lumping this box around with me because I don't feel I need to but then if I was doing something magical at the beach then it'd be perfect to take with me so it swings and roundabouts but it works well for me especially if I'm away from home like if I'm staying in a hotel or just generally away. I don't necessarily use it but I like to have it with me so I know that it's there and it's kind of a psychological thing knowing it's there as well. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. It's kind of a first for me. I'm wanting to be, to be more open on my YouTube about my witchy stuff but it didn't go down so well last time. Although since I started doing these uh, magazines of the D'Agostini Mind, Body and Spirit, I kind of feel that that's a sort of a stepping stone. And while this face, the Facebook, no, while this uh, YouTube was previously used for planner stuff and craft stuff, I feel like it's all part of me and who I am. So it's a personal channel. And I'm going to keep it as that, as to what I'm doing, what I'm into, and such forth. But I want to try and get into doing maybe, like, say, Witchy Wednesdays now and again of Witchy Hauls and various tidbits. I do have a blog which I'm trying my best to keep and do, and I will put that below. But it's basically Pagan Planet, Witchy Words, and Magical Make. So pwwmm at blogspot.com com or dot blogspot.com I will put a thingy on the screen and I will put the information down below um so yes that's more or less my travel altar and if anybody has any questions or any thoughts or even suggestions for things that I could or should possibly use or what have you then that would be greatly appreciated I'd love to hear your thoughts regardless in in the comments below if you liked this then give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already then maybe even subscribe and check out some of my other videos blessings bye and thanks for watching subscribe